So let's apply that fundamental theorem to evaluate some definite integrals. The first function that we want to integrate is 6. We want to integrate that from 2 to 5. So the first thing that we need to find is just the indefinite integral of 6 dx, which is going to be 6x plus c, which is our function capital F of x. So we have the antiderivative. Now we need to evaluate this at 5 and at 2 and take the difference. So we need to evaluate this at f of 5 and then subtract evaluating capital F at 2. And that result is going to give us the value of our definite integral or the area under the curve. So in this case, that would be 6 times 5 plus that constant c. So that's our function capital F of x evaluated at 5. And then we'll subtract evaluating our function at 2. So what this is going to give us is 30 plus c. And then distributing the negative through here, we'll get minus 12 minus c. So what's going to happen is our c's are going to cancel, and that will happen each and every time. So even though our indefinite integral has that uh, arbitrary constant c added on, when we evaluate definite integrals, those c's are always going to cancel out. In this case, leaving us with 30 minus 12, or 18, as the area under the curve evaluated from 2 to 5. So we can look at doing exactly the same thing with integrating 2x plus 7. So this is going to become 2 times x squared over 2 plus 7x. And that indefinite integral would have a plus c, but since those are always going to cancel out, we can just skip that step. And this is just a notation for saying, so a vertical bar to say that we want to evaluate this expression from x equals 2 to x equals 3. So simplifying a little bit, the 2's will cancel there. So we have x squared plus 7x, which we want to evaluate from x equals 2 to x equals 3. So this will give us 3 squared plus 7 times 3 is our antiderivative evaluated at 3. And then we'll subtract evaluating that same expression at 2. So we'll have 2 squared plus 7 times 2. Which will give us 9 plus 21. And then again, distributing the negative through minus 4, minus 14, or that area under the curve exactly equal to 12. In example 3, we have the integral of 9 over x, which is going to become 9 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. So that's our indefinite integral, which we then want to evaluate from x equals 4, to x equals 12. So this will be 9 times the natural log of the absolute value of 12 minus 9 times the natural log of the absolute value of 4. So again, evaluating that antiderivative at the upper and lower bounds, taking the difference. So in this case, we could factor out the 9. And then the absolute value of 12 is just 12. So this is the natural log of 12 minus the natural log of 4. And then using properties of logs, we could rewrite this as 9 times the natural log of 12 over 4. Or 9 times the natural log of 3.
In example four, we have a slightly different case. So here our lower bound is six and our upper bound is three. This doesn't exactly make sense because this should go from a smaller number to a larger number. So the first step we're gonna take is to flip those two values so that this does go from three to six. But in order to do that, we need to put a negative symbol out in front of our integral. So this will become the opposite of the integral from three to six of 2x plus 5 dx, which will become 2 times x squared over 2 plus 5x. And actually, we need a negative out in front of that whole thing. Evaluated from x equals 3 to x equals 6. So our 2's here will cancel, which will leave us with negative 6 squared plus 5 times 6. So that's our antiderivative evaluated at 6 minus our antiderivative evaluated at 3. So we get 3 squared plus 5 times 3. So distributing our negatives, and in the second term, the two negatives will cancel each other out. This is going to give us negative 6 squared, so negative 36 minus 30, plus 3 squared is 9, plus 5 times 3 is going to be 15, which gives us an area under the curve between those two bounds of negative 42. In our last example, first thing we want to do is a simple rewrite to write this as 6 times x to the 1 6th power. So integrating will give us 6x to the 7 6th. So increasing that exponent by 1, dividing by the exact same value, evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 1. 6 divided by 7 sixths will give us 36 sevenths. x to the 7 sixths evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So evaluating this expression at 1 will give us 36 over 7 times 1 to any power is just going to be 1, so we'll get 36 over 7. And then minus evaluating it at 0 will give us 0 times 36 sevenths, so we get 0, or an exact area under the curve of 36 over 7.